Okay, so it's the last day of Grimfest 2017, it's Sunday. I'm very pleased to have the uh, crew for, behind um, Borley Rectory, which we're screening later on. It's the festival world premiere of the movie today, so we're really excited to have it at Grimfest. Um, so would you guys like to introduce yourselves and then just tell us a little bit about what your role was on the film? Mm. Uh, my name's Ashley Thorpe. I was the, uh, the director and animator for the film. Hello, I'm Claire Louise Amius and I'm playing Mabel Smith. Uh, I'm Jonathan Rigby and I'm playing Ghost Hunter Harry Price. The most important part. Yeah. Well. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Atkinson, the producer and Dog's Body. Dog's Body. <laughs> <laughs> so l Everything listen, else. Yeah. tell us a little bit about this film because it's such an unusual film. It's like nothing else we've ever screened before at Grimfest, I think, in terms of you know the way you created this this piece and what your intentions were in terms of the kind of feel and style of the film Ashley obviously it's your kind yeah. of baby really you've been working on this for quite some time I think years yeah yeah years and years at least since the 1920s um, <laughs> no it was um, it took a long time because it was produced completely independently through crowdfunding and it was done very much evenings and weekends by looking after a little one in between, you know, like regular paid work. So hence why it took so long. Um, but I just really wanted to, I, I had this idea of making a, a ghost story that had a little bit that looked like kind of spirit photography and looked like the, looked like it, it was shot in the time that Borley Rectory was famous. So I wanted it to evoke not just the actual place itself would evoke films from that period mm. and look at films like the the, the James Whale, uh, like things like sure. things like Dead of Night, so and just evoke late 30s, all those early 40s very black much and so. white movies. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And it also allowed me then to incorporate uh, contemporary photographs of the rectory before it was demolished and use them and animate over them and into them mm. as, as backgrounds and use them as very very useful kind of reference material. This, I th you've made short films that use similar techniques. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about those techniques? Because what you produced is so visually stunning and amazing to look at. But I mean, uh, me also being a filmmaker, I'm looking at this and wow, how did I you achieve that. this? This is <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit, if you, if you don't mind, uh, uh, give it's away some of your secrets on how you've produced this wonderful film. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of different techniques. There's um, there's a lot of uh, rotoscoping work in there, so I'll photograph uh, wonderful actors, such as ourselves. So did you shoot these guys in studio? Yeah. It, like against maybe against screen screen? screen. Yeah, right, okay. against screen screen. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, no, it's no slur upon their wonderful work, but I was kind of treating the actors as, as elements or layers in an animation. So once I <coughs> captured the performances, I could then remove the backgrounds and, and animate in and around them using these different backgrounds. Right. And, it, and it is, it's a mixture of about three or four different animation techniques. Some of it, there are some shots in there that are completely digitally drawn from start to finish. Other ones are a mix of live action and digital backgrounds or painted wow. elements. So it's a real, uh, it's a real collage of different mm. styles really. Well, I must say it looks amazing. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about how you attracted your cast to this because I mean you've got some wonderful actors in the, in the piece. With a lot of luck. <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, because obviously it must have been something quite different for these guys to get involved with. But, you know, it's not a conventional film or a conventional filmmaking process. Yeah. Was that tricky to convince them to be part of this? Or? Weirdly, no, no. I don't know. I still don't know why you agreed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask them. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I just came out and asked, and yeah. I was very lucky. They, they just said that sounds really interesting. Yes. And did you have a did you have a, a script as such? Because it, I mean, yeah. it's, oh, yeah. so okay. So, so, so was, was that the first thing board. that you saw? Oh, and a storyboard. Mm. Yeah. So, was that the? Did you read the script initially, or the first thing that I saw were Ashley's earlier short films, and yes. I was astonished, like you, by um, you know how visually extraordinary they were, and I thought, yeah, this looks like a good project. And the script was very erudite, and obviously was based on somebody who was deeply immersed in the Borley Rectory history, and. Um, to play Harry Price in particular was very exciting because he's such an enigmatic figure, so I was sold on it yes. from that point. Great. Right. And so the shooting process, was it, was it spread over time or was it done all in, in a small chunk of 
because you know because it's not conventional. You know, you expect with a conventional movie, it, you know, you you try and sh squeeze the shoot down into as small a time as possible. Mm. Did, but was because this isn't shot that way. Did, was it spread over time the process? Or? It was. It was spread over time. In fact, sometimes it felt a little bit, a little bit Ed Wood, as in. <laughs> We've got enough to shoot for this many days. Right. Let's get in the studio and shoot that bit. Yeah. And then once I've animated that bit, I'll have more to show to people and we can raise more money to make that bit. So but did that, there, there that were like year breaks actors, between did shoots. You have to bring your performers back again a, a number of times. Yeah. And what, that must have been tricky for you. It was. You know, obviously getting their availability. And that well, kind of absolutely. Thing. And, and the, the worst person for that was, um, was Reese because yes. it, for the very first shoot, it took us four months to pin him down for two days shooting. Yes. You know, and, and Reece, Reece Shearsmith. Reece Shearsmith, yeah. yeah. And I think that initially um, the, the backers were starting to get concerned. It's like, well, we've given you this money. Why haven't mm. you shot anything yet? It's like, I can't get my actor yet. Right. I've got to wait. <laughs> He's not available until like, four months later. So, so it was, it was, real, it was moments kind of grabbed here and, and then, there. And we all get visibly older as the, uh, so, uh, as so the you, film yeah. progresses. It's all done on purpose. It's all very good. Um, in sequence. Hair, super, yeah. frozen, yeah. uh, kudos to your um, hair and makeup because, you know, they made it match. It did look the same. You know, yeah. with a big it looks gap. incredible. Yeah, you, you can, <laughs> there are shots where, you know, somebody walks through a door in 2014 and they, they exit in the end of 2015. It's that kind of thing. It really is. We were, we were lucky that nobody lost an ear or something. So, so <laughs> what, what was it that, that drew you to the whole Bully Rectory thing? Um, why, why that is the subject for this particular film? It was, um, it was a, I read it when I was a, uh, when I was a child. I yeah. had the Osborne Book of Ghosts. And okay. yeah, and it really was. It was, it was this thing. It, it absolutely captured my interest when I was a little boy. And I think it was because it had this, this title, which was, you know, the most haunted house in England. So it felt like it was, it was like the, it was the Mount Everest of ghost stories. It was the pinnacle. And it was also that it wasn't just a haunting that featured one, uh, like one monk that would walk across a lawn. It had everything. It yes. had people bricked up in wars. It had a headless coachman. Yeah. It had a nun. It had a monk. It had yeah. spectral messages on the walls. Ghostly footsteps. It was. It was like a, it was like cherry picking all the the lovely kind of gothic imagery. I mean, it's been and an influence in to a, a, a lot of other. Yeah, uh, yeah. kind of famous haunted house movies, I think. Absolutely. I mean, The Haunting and The Legend of Hell House owe a lot to it. Mm. Not, not just from the, the Borley legend itself, but also because you've got them. That was the beginning of this idea of a scientific method of investigation. It wasn't um, mediums going in there. Sure. It was someone who'd self-proclaimed yeah, self yeah, yeah. himself, yes. albeit as a, you know, like a doctor of parapsychology. But he went in there and approached it, in his mind at least, you know, as a mm. as a scientific piece of research. So, have you have you guys seen the film? Yeah. This isn't yes. right. You've seen it. So it's not. This isn't the first time. Okay. So I'm just curious. What's your impression of it now that you've seen it finished? Because I imagine the process of making the film. If you did a, did a lot of your stuff in front of green screen, you would not have got really got a sense of the visual quality until it was finished. So having now seen the film, is it is, is it? How do you feel about it? It's like seeing what was inside my imagination, but much more beautiful. Oh, you great. know. That's, uh, that's what it was like seeing it. I mean, it's just it just looked ridiculous on the day, visually. you know. <laughs> but it was lovely because we were sort of miming. There are some pictures. Yeah. There are some stairs. There is a. There's a real skeleton. chair. Yeah. But nothing else. Yeah. There were yeah. a few props. There were a few props. <laughs> and a cupboard. Yeah. There were you know. a few. That must be incredibly hard as performers to kind of try and put yourself in that place. Yeah. Well, I guess it's what people who worked in Ray Harryhausen films always had to do. They had to imagine the dinosaur they were fighting. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we had to imagine the dark that we were going yes. into, yes. of which there's quite a lot in yes. this film. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you for joining us today. It's a fantastic movie, and I'm sure it's going to play really well with the audience here at Grimfest. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. Cheers. Uh, I saw the film, and it was so amazing. It, it like, it really touched me. And I, I have a Blu-ray player, and I don't own any Blu-rays, but I am going to buy this on Blu-ray. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really beautifully crafted piece of English Gothic. The soundscape was terrific. Uh, I really liked uh, how it looked. It had this quite unique visual style all the way through. Really brilliant, very different animated, almost animated feature. Uh, really impressive, uh, amazing achievement. Bally Rectory, that is my favourite of this festival. I like I like the animation and I like the way they've done it. Um, I thought Reese Shearsmith was brilliant in it. Just the visual the visual effects of it and just the attention to detail. True story and I really enjoyed it. It was it was excellent. The filmmaking techniques were absolutely superb.